bring me up at eight Detroit Lions. And this is one we've penciled in a handful of times. One I think I'd still take if I am then. And it's Greedy Williams. Because what he can do from a press man perspective. Cornerback from LSU. So LSU cornerback. I'm seeing this live. Now, if you're on profootballfocus.com looking at our draft board live, you'll see that Byron Murphy, the corner from Washington, is actually ranked above Greedy Williams from LSU. Explain mm-hmm. why you would go Greedy over Byron in this case. Because Greedy is at his best in press man coverage. Byron Murphy's much more of an all around corner, much better in off coverage, zone coverage. That's where he excels. And that's, I mean, a lot of teams still run a lot of zone coverage, but the Lions are one of the few in the NFL that are extremely man heavy. Almost 50% of their snaps are going to be man coverage. Greedy Williams is the quintessential long, athletic press corner that you can play matchups with in terms of he'll take the big receiver from that other team. And that's it. they do that in Detroit. You know, Matt Patricia does that. If coming from Bill Belichick, he will play the matchups with his cornerbacks. He gives you that long matchup corner to go against the other team's big physical wide receiver and be able to slow him down. We saw him handle DK Metcalf fairly well in their matchup a season ago. I like it. So uh, if we were doing team-based draft boards, we, don't, we have to put one generic board out for PFF. If mm-hmm. we were doing that, Greedy Williams would be above Byron Murphy for the Lions, Lions. Yes. and a few other teams. So um, that is that is some insight into just how NFL teams build their boards and and where they you know, mm-hmm. you know how that how that really plays out. There's no generic draft board that fits for all 32 teams. I'm now up at number nine for the Buffalo Bills, and I am loving some of the options I have here. I know we should do seven rounds just so I could prove to Bills fans. Yeah. I know Bills fans want offensive talent. I know they want playmakers and offensive line and all that stuff to build around Josh Allen, but I've been pounding the table for Byron Murphy Mm -hmm. to play corner in that scheme. They brought in Kevin Johnson. They're not tied to him opposite Tredavious White, right? Mm -hmm. Byron Murphy opposite Tredavious White in that scheme would be fantastic. I know there's rumors about Ed Oliver now potentially being a Buffalo Bill. I don't hate the defensive line talent there Mm -hmm. either. But I'm going corner. I'm going Byron Murphy, the Washington corner, who I think is the best zone corner in the draft, going to a zone-heavy team, the Buffalo Bills, number nine overall. One of my favorite fits in the entire draft. I was just going to say, you're predictable, Steve. You're very predictable. That's that was, fine. I saw that coming to my I'm not way. predictable. I'm consistent. <laughs> I'm consistent. Well, I'm inconsistent. I went DK Metcalf at seven. How predictable yeah. am I, Mike? Getting nuts. Byron no, Murphy's I, off the board here. I don't. If you're a Bills fan, you're thinking, oh, no, we need this offensive player. We need that you know, on offense. I, I think you did an all right job this offseason of sort of hitting your offensive needs. Now, you could get better at wide receiver. You could get better at offensive line. But I do think you want to hit best player available here at nine. You're not in a position where there's such a glaring need that something has to be upgraded. You have to reach for something here. Right. I think Byron Murphy's the best player on the board in terms of how he fits that scheme defensively and who wouldn't want a better defense. You know, you can be very good in pass coverage, but you can also be the Seattle Seahawks where you're dominant for four to five years if you have legitimate all, you know, Pro Bowl type players at both corner positions, at your safety positions. If that's right. your secondary, you truly you can't have too exactly. many good corners. That, so that truly is a position where, it, um, where it's relevant. All right, at 15, I'm the Washington Redskins. Here's what I would do. I would probably try to trade for Josh Rosen, take care of that quarterback situation. We can't We're do not that. Allow it. We can't do that today. Um, we have a guy on our draft board, DeAndre Baker from Georgia, the cornerback. Fell a little bit the last time we rejigged the board a little bit, but I've always mm. been pretty happy with him. I still think he's a first round corner. I'm looking at him versus the glaring need that is wide receiver for, for Washington, but I think the drop off at cornerback potentially is significant. So I'm taking Baker. DeAndre Baker from Georgia, he's the corner that I'm going to take. And if I'm Washington, if we did get to a second round, there is a plethora of talented wide receivers that I could probably take Mm -hmm. second and third round, and I'm happy, and I'm happy there. So that's why I got to go DeAndre Baker here, shore up a little bit of that pass coverage on the back end. You can never have too many corners. So DeAndre Baker is my guy at 15 for the Skins. Yeah, I think you're the Redskins. You're in a position where you add valuable positions because it's not happening this year with no Alex Smith. You just you don't go for need. I mean, you, even though you have needs on the roster, don't draft for need. Draft valuable positions, talented players at those positions, and hope you hit on them because adding you know cornerstone type guys, not necessarily. Oh, let me get this guard because we need a guard. Draft a cornerstone position. Draft a cornerback, edge rusher, wide receiver, something like that that will be valuable to your team for years to come. 
uh, some things are happening here. Seattle Seahawks at 21. Mm-hmm. As I've mock draft drafted to the Seattle Seahawks in the past, what, uh, before we rejigged the board, this felt like a great place for them to attack edge. Yes. To help Frank Clark there. Now, we've moved some of those edge defenders down as we have more information on yes. them. We've moved a few safeties up. We have. Two safeties who have legitimate free safety skills make up two out of the next four players on our draft board. So the next players on our draft board, wide receiver J.J. Arcega-Whiteside from Stanford, Cody Ford, the guard slash tackle from Oklahoma. We always know Seattle could use some help on the offensive line, Mm -hmm. but the two safeties, Nasir Adderley from Delaware and Darnell Savage from Maryland, legit free safety skills. Yeah. Earl Thomas is gone. Mm Mm-hmm. They play this cover three scheme. Everybody's trying to duplicate what they they need a true free safety. Yes. What if they go free safety here? What if? I I mean, if you really are high on these guys, and we are high on these, I don't think Tedrick Thompson, Delano Hill, Bradley McDougal is really stopping me from attacking that position in the draft with how valuable we've seen it be in that defense. So I'm going safe. I, our Sega Whiteside, by the way, pairing him with Russell Wilson would be beautiful mm-hmm. because you do need that's that quarterback that's going to take some chances, throw those tight window throws, and let a guy go up and make plays. Russell Wilson does that extremely well. Not just jump balls, like actually gives guys opportunities to make plays. I love that fit potentially. But man, I'm looking at this defense. Nasir Adderley's free safety skills are great. Darnell Savage's ugh, athleticism is great. Now I just don't know which one to pick. You, well, you got to, Steve. The, your, your clock's ticking down. The Ravens are sitting there at 22 rated hand I in their card. I have 10 minutes here. All right. I'm going to Sear Adderley from Delaware. He's going to step in at free safety for the Seattle Seahawks. He has the type of range to be at least 80% of Earl Thomas, mm-hmm. okay. which they haven't had every time Earl Thomas has been hurt. So that's a bit of a curveball. I, I don't think that's happened in a whole lot of mock drafts. But no. I'm going Adderley, the free safety, to the Seattle Seahawks. And like I said, I don't. the safety group there is not stopping me from drafting a safety if I think Nazir Adderley has true center field skills. And I, I mean, he does. We've seen it at Delaware. Freakish range, freakish burst to cover the seam there in that cover three. I think he's a fit for that defense. All right. You're up now again. 24 Raiders on the clock. Left me with, let's see, the highest players left on our board right now. J.J. Arcega-Whiteside, Darnell Savage, Christian Wilkins. I already went defensive tackle, though. Uh, Elkton Jenkins high on the board, uh, but they already have a good center there in Oakland. So uh, this one's tough. I'm not exactly sure where I want to go on this board. Darnell Savage doesn't make a ton of sense after you sign LaMarcus Joyner. Already have Carl Joseph on the roster. I might end up going and reaching for a cornerback here because of the positional value. We have these guys a little lower on our board. It's not a reach, though. But I'm not, I was going to say, I don't think it's a huge reach down compared to the other guys on our board, and especially with what they could, with the need they have there. So I'm going to pencil in a big-bodied, long corner with some perceived upside here. Imani Oruarie, out of Penn State, fantastic athlete, did the best of any of the corners in the one-on-ones at the Senior Bowl. Very smooth hips. Uh, some projection did not have the highest grade last season for Penn State, but I, I love the traits translating to the NFL. And again, a guy who might not have it year one, but I think can develop into that guy down the road in a value position for Oakland. Definitely like over Warrie. And again, if you're building long term, you know, look, our analytics guys would be saying the whole draft board is going to be QBs and corners in the first. If a guy's a second round corner, move him up to the first from a value standpoint mm-hmm. then so then it's not a bad pick because we put a second round grade on him that's where i'm kind of leaning right now with the next pick at 25 for the philadelphia eagles darnell savage at safety is our in jj arcega whiteside still our top two guys that we're looking at on the draft board i could go arcega whiteside here as well i'm just not willing to make the move on him i guess yeah. pull he, the trigger steve he could be the next alshon jeffrey to replace alshon jeffrey in Philadelphia. However, I'm not going to try to convince you. You're like looking at me to try to convince you of something. I'm just talking it out. Okay. I'm just talking it out. However, I might look at corner as well for Philadelphia. Okay. So I'm going to go with a guy that we have a high second round grade on. That's David Long from Michigan. He is sneaking into the first round for us as well because, look, the Eagles continuing, need to continue to build that cornerback depth. David Long from Michigan, 
forced incompletion at a higher percentage than anybody else in the nation over the last three years that's in this draft class. I'm going David Long for the Eagles. I'm leaving a couple first-round grades on the table to go get the cornerback. I love David Long. I think if you bring Ronald Darby back, you, you're not comfortable enough with Sidney Jones, Rasul Douglas, those young guys yet from what we've seen from them on the football field to pencil one of them in and feel great about them as a starter. David Long, in my opinion, probably the second-best man coverage corner in this draft class. Uh, he's a little undersized. I don't love that, but maybe if you want to keep him, start him off in the slot. I think he is that talented in terms of what he can do athletically that that man coverage, even at his size, is going to translate to the NFL. But now Darnell Savage is going to the Chiefs. Okay. So the Chiefs just need anybody that can cover anything on the back end. Mm -hmm. They've been looking for a safety, Darnell Savage, rangy safety to the Chiefs at 29 and this is only because they there's because we started stealing second round corners off the draft board so yes yeah we need to uh i think i need to grab a safety instead i like savage there i would have liked savage and with the charge as well but i do think he's very much worthy of a first round selection for sure fourth sub four four speed that shows up on the field i mean mm -hmm. he just accelerates through the catch point darnell savage from maryland and yeah the chiefs anywhere in that secondary qualifies his need at this point so you're gonna take the colt and then i get to jump in with your raider we're just gonna yeah, alternate. we're just so gonna we, alternate we from here anymore not gonna get too crazy with it i am going to go for the indianapolis colts i know they could still use edge but they took a couple guys in the second round last year if you're going to address edge do it earlier if you're going to do it or else believe in taekwon lewis and kamoko Ture to develop so i'm going to go help defensively still and go with a guy we've penciled into the Colts a lot in terms of scheme fit Justin Lane Michigan Ooh, State cornerback freakishly athletic double dip there in Michigan State playing offense and a little a little wide receiver there for the Spartans this past season ran some nice routes there out wide I think he has the ball skills the zone feel for that defense he that's, is the pick that's the fit yeah he yep. was a receiver has those receiver ball skills has good zone skills at corner all right, on to 36. I have the 49ers here. Grab Nick Bosa in the first round. I think you just still have to go defensive help for them. I, the Elkton Jenkins still on the board. Love him as a center. Garrett Bradbury, love him as a center fit. But I still, in that scheme, in that scheme would be fantastic in that scheme. But, I mean, they already have uh, the Weston Richburg at center. Paid him a good deal of money to be playing the center position there. I'm going to go safety help. This one's going to be Chauncey. Gardner Johnson, really a a upgrade from Jimmy Ward can do a lot of the same things Jimmy Ward can, but just at a higher level. I like it. So it's the Florida corner slash safety, very good, just slot ball skills mm -hmm. brings a lot to the table. And you went uh, away from our safety board because it's all about fit and yes in, in scheme. Mm -hmm. So I think you know Gardner Johnson does fit what the 49ers are doing. I have the Packers at forty four. They went two picks in the first round. Jerry Tillery at twelve. Addressed defensive line. Andy Isabella at 30. Addressed a weapon for Aaron Rodgers. Now they're going to go safety. And Juan Thornhill oh, comes no. off the board. The Virginia safety. Probably the best. They are going to need a free type safety after signing. Uh, gosh, my brain is not working today. Uh, after signing Adrian Amos in free Amos, agency. Yeah. The box safety. More, much more of a box guy. And they play a lot of single high there in Green Bay. Juan Thornhill. More the probably the best free safety on our the best free safety on our board. Taylor Rapp, Amani Hooker ahead of them, both more box type slot guys. So Juan Thornhill fits that scheme. That would be the fit for them.